Welcome to the counter offer. What episode is this? Four. Is it? Yeah, episode four. I thought it was five. It's four. Mm, it's four. It feels well. There was one time that I did not record it correctly, so yeah, that's probably why you're feeling fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling the deja vu that we got to go a little bit further, but I think we've gotten better. Yeah, I think our, we're getting the hang of this. Our, our, our topics are getting a little bit better, and we're actually searching for the best ones. In the beginning, it was kind of like whatever we could just talk about, whatever matters most to us. So, if you'd like to start, Eric has claimed he has so many news stories. Well, there were a lot of news stories. Some of them you had to pay for, so I wasn't able to access them. Okay. So, it was kind of annoying. I had to choose through the free articles. I won't say the one. We'll discuss it afterwards. But this is a little, little clip. Go into private browsing, and they don't know. Huh. Yeah. They can't well, claim uh, your iOS device. A little tip for all. Yeah, so I get a lot there. of free content. Oh. I'm not. I do Is like that on your iPhone. That uh, yeah, on the yeah. iPhone. So I switch it over to private, and then I click the link, and it goes to private ah. from email. Yeah, but just don't tell anyone. Good thing this isn't live on about four different platforms. So if you'd like to start, Mr. Bottomley, I have. Well, mine. there's a bunch, but the. Uh, one article I didn't print out, but it is a follow-up on the last one, is that luxury home sales continued to tick up. Really? Yeah. Last week, I was very last week it went up even more than it was uh, the week before. So, wow. you know, we're on the right trajectory there. Especially now. Yeah. Like, this wouldn't really be the time that they would buy. So that's very interesting. So good. the article that I chose was New York City's luxury real estate market in flux, but showbiz insiders still scoop up choice properties. Okay. Yeah. Pretty I cool. I like that. Actually. You I know, like that. It was uh, kind of like, I. It, this grabbed me because I always think, you know, people are saying, who buys these luxury properties? Yeah. You know, wow. Like I saw an apartment go up for $10, an LLC. $10 million, $20 million. Who ends up buying that? Yeah, and uh, it came up a conversation a few times this week. It's like the uh, people in entertainment and yeah. show business are actually the ones that end up uh, picking up these properties. Oh yeah, and uh, that kind of got me into the article. It ended up being a little sports. more just like yep, sports exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, newscasters, ESPN, yeah. uh, people from LA. Yep. So the LA crowd apparently likes oh, the, no. the penthouses here. Okay, and that's what the, the article they said. They can see the greenery. Yeah, and uh, you know there was a lot of talk about how successful the market has been over the past eighteen months. Yeah, you know until we hit this kind of dry spell with interest rates going up, and uh, you know everybody could, was talking about how we're still above twenty nineteen sales numbers. Wow. So although we have had a significant slowdown from what was what was quoted as historic and epic volume of sales. Uh, right now, we're still higher than 2019. Yeah. So who's buying these properties, you're wondering? It's the people in entertainment. Yeah. It's uh, notable. A lot of entertainment is moving to Brooklyn, Brooklyn Heights. You know, there's a laundry list of people who have moved out to Brooklyn Heights. Matt Damon is in Brooklyn Heights. Okay. Uh, somebody was telling me they listed off all these He's people. He's a good hockey player. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, Jennifer Lawrence, <laughs> moving out. <laughs> Cobble Hill, Brooklyn Heights, those are yep. the uh, hot neighborhoods. So 841 homes priced at $5 million plus have sold in Manhattan through August. What was that number? Uh, 841. Wow. Yep. Wow. And entertainment executive types are attracted to top-of-the-line midtown condos. Yep. Uh, Corcoran reps a penthouse three floors overlooking Central Park at 111 West 57th Street. Yep. Currently listed for $66 million. And they said that entertainment, show business, that's who they're, uh, you know, this coming three, in to look at the department. Yeah, and it's like you can wrap that all up into entertainment. And it, entertainment is going to be, say, movies. It's also going to be music. And it's going to be... You know, even all of these massive companies that have gone into OTT, you know, it would be Amazon, Hulu, you know, they're paying these crazy amounts of numbers to compete against Netflix. And now all those directors, movie actors and everyone else. And then you move into Brooklyn, which used to be the least expensive. And now my sister's out there. It's not like she made it expensive, but she's just <laughs> she's talking about how much different it is. And once you're in that area... 
I know this about Dumbo is that people that move to Dumbo, they don't really go throughout the rest of the city. They, it, they this like niche community, this niche neighborhood that they've built on the waterfront that overlooks the city. It's kind of like living on the Jersey shore coast, you know, which is say West New York, um, Weehawken, you know, where you're overlooking like say 34th street, if you drew a line across 34th street over the Hudson, and now you have this beautiful view of the city, you're not paying the taxes, you're not paying the prices, you're not paying the food and everything else. So it's, <clears throat> it's a win-win. Well, the buyers are in control right now yeah. and uh you that know, is for sure and this the entertainment and the content is where those people are making money yeah you know, their incomes haven't been hit very much why so, yeah covid uh, <laughs> what did you do you just wanted to entertain so the people who've got the money they're still moving into the city they're buying those luxury homes and taking advantage of the market i actually saw i'm not really on facebook that much even though i'm live on facebook right now but i saw more people asking for show recommendations in the last like <laughs> six months. They have literally, ex they, they've seen all of the shows that are currently out there that they're looking for show recommendations. Like you think about that, like that's, that's insane. You know, that people have consumed that much content and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Do you have a so, show recommendation? <laughs> I don't watch anything. <laughs> How about your article? All right, so. Moving on, we have a totally different radical shift in how residential companies are now being valued. So over the last, say, two years, it has clearly been in, on fire, not only on the entertainment aspect, but clearly in the real estate, the companies are making more, the brokers were making more, um, you know, the, anything associated with real estate, photos, video, because it was just up, gone, up, gone, up, over the price, over the ASCII price. And all. And to be honest, I've been through 2009 and there was a lot of consolidation after 2009. Companies that maybe had a good run in 2006, 2007, and then they get the recession. And to be honest, I think there's gonna be a lot of consolidations. I think there's gonna be uh, companies with layoffs in real estate specifically. And the reason being is that the crunch on commissions have clearly been there, but also just agents that aren't producing are not profitable at all for the company. Like there is per desk, there is clearly a number that every company knows. In other words, at this desk, this person must produce this amount of money minimum to pay for the services, the building, the commercial, the all the services that they provide. So what they're saying is these VC firms, and there's a lot of people going into the real estate commission uh, community is that what they're saying is it used to be before COVID, it was the trailing 12 months. It was pretty easy to say, what is your profit over the trailing 12 months? Now they're looking at three years. So they don't ask three years or yeah. forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're pretty much discounting all of COVID. They're yeah. saying like, okay, great. But it was easy <laughs> to sell. That's not really your commission and that's not really your profit because it was just a it was a tidal wave of money coming towards you so it's it's interesting how the next say 18 months are gonna well yeah pan out no valuations have come down across all the real estate companies especially um, the public ones we know those yeah, the public ones i'm just thinking of them all in my head zillow uh, Rocket Mortgage, Redfin, uh, Redfin, you know, and Compass as long as well as uh, Element are both public companies. Yeah, and you really have to, you know, right now in the financial markets, it is all about earnings. So yeah. you know, a lot of these companies over the last couple of years, not even real estate related, were, uh, you know, future earnings. Yeah. You spend to make more revenue and they were being valued off their revenue. Right yep. now, there's a lot more focus on like, how much money did you make? Yeah. How much money did you make over the last 12 months? Now they're thinking, you know, even further, further back. Yeah. And how can you even uh, predict what it's going to be in the future? 100%. So very tough to value companies, especially ones in a rocky real estate market. Yeah, because if you think about it, the actual business model of real estate is transactional. There's no subscription model. You know, Amazon knows this many people are gonna pay for Prime every single year, it's guaranteed. Subscription models are clearly the easiest and best predictors of the future for right. real estate. It is way up in the air. And to be honest, you know, I've been tracking this, you know, having started BPI, say seven years ago, I've seen the shift 
it is radical towards online. It's radical towards branding the individual agent instead of the company. It's, it's just way different than it was 10 years ago, five years ago. Social media has completely democratized how to get business. And before it was like cold calling, then it was referrals. Now it's like people just do social media. You don't even need the real estate company. So it'll be interesting how well, that shakes out. What's interesting Top brokers. Well, you know, the, the epic run, you, uh, of course, with the public companies, that was uh, the time for real estate. Yeah. They got overvalued. Yep. You know, so now it's time for those valuations to come down, come back to reality. Yep. And yeah. But on a positive note, you know, this is more uh, commercial. The TPG is a big real estate fund, uh, a REIT, and they ended up closing their fourth fund for $6.8 billion to look at opportunistic real estate deals. Wow. Yeah. That's how much they raised? Yep. And wow. it was oversubscribed. The fund was oversubscribed, wow. hitting its hard cap and securing more than $6.8 billion of total commitments. So far since inception, they have invested $9.1 billion of equity with this strategy. So wow. this is over half of, I mean, way more than half of what they've already invested in their total existence. Yeah. They just raised that in the, you know, financial markets with all the uncertainty going on. I mean, Do they talk there's about a lot of great articles actually, out there. I yeah. just saw this and I was like, wow. Those guys are doing something big right now. That's a lot about, of money to raise. Yeah. In and, the real estate, especially commercial. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> well, that really goes to show that there is a huge ap appetite for, you know, real estate investments. Yeah. Uh, Did they talk about what they actually are investing in? Warehouses or? I'm sure it's all across the board. Whatever okay. it looks like a good opportunity, even if it's multifamily, if it's a warehouse, you okay. know, whatever type of deal it is, something that they can add some value, they're putting their clients money there. So, yeah. Uh, well, I think exciting. the buy and hold is the name of the game. Yeah. The, the, this isn't flipping. The closing costs are too high. The transaction fees are too high. There's a buy and hold, and it could be leveraged. Obviously, we have this as collateral to get future loans. It also could be pulling out and refine. You know, there's so much you could do with commercial. We talked about it last week that a lot of commercial buildings might be going residential if the city's involved, the city's not. I think there's going to be a big incentive by a lot of these potentially smaller cities or smaller towns to compete with the ones like Charlotte or Nashville, you know, these places that just Boom, the banks went to Charlotte, like Bank of America, it's in Charlotte, Nashville exploded. You know, it'll be interesting, a place like Pittsburgh, they, you know, it's it's sort of rebounding, but they have a lot of buildings that they could potentially lease out or, you know, in, in big cities where you're not expanding the land like Manhattan, you know, it's a totally different ball game. But if you start seeing people, especially through the migration of the last two years, it, that's that's something to track especially how much money they've raised. Yeah, That's I wild. wonder how many different uh, investors there are in that. Yeah. But it goes to show how many people are thinking, you know, they're not listening to the news. They're thinking, you know, real estate is down, interest rates are going up. Now is a good time to look for opportunities. Yeah. They've been waiting. Yeah, exactly. They've been waiting. A lot of cash. These the aren't side. dumb people. Yeah. They have spreadsheet upon spreadsheet of they know everything about the entire area that they might buy in. So it's, it's interesting. Moving on to my second one, which is the eight reasons. I posted it to my story yesterday, uh, Instagram story, but it was actually a very interesting article. And it talked about the eight reasons that we're not going to have the housing inventory Armageddon. Clickbait Armageddon anytime soon. In other words, there's not going to be this crazy influx of properties hitting the market. And all of the reasons, this wasn't like a reason like, I feel like it might be, it was a well-written article, it's a very good journalist. And what they talked about is builders, and those are new home builders, those are potentially going to subdivisions or divisions, those are people that are even building in New York City. It's just gotten so expensive to actually build. Um, also, you have to think of not only the price of work or labor, it's also the price of materials. So does it make sense for me to build if materials are through the roof? Before it used to be cheap, potent, not cheap, but cheaper materials and the labor was really like, all right, how much lower can I get it? But now it's like, what about, you know, copper? 
or even appliances or, you know, it's, it's a very, and to be honest, these are gigantic home building, comp like they're building hundreds of homes at one time. So that was one of them. I don't know if you have anything on that, the first one. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, there's a lack of homes uh, for a lot of reasons. So, yeah. you know, I wouldn't imagine a lot of inventory coming on just because there is a lot Someone less. will rent it. Yeah. Someone will put it. And people are stay, staying put. Yeah. You know, they, bought, they just bought. That, that's like literally <laughs> all of the points. It's, it, it's just a very factually based, which is now I'm going to rent it out as an Airbnb. Yeah. You know, like before it used to be a vacation home and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Now it's an Airbnb and they're like, well, it pays for my mortgage. It pays for my taxes. Unemployment is nowhere near what it was in 2009. Again, this was sudden. I went through it at Oppenheimer Funds before I got into real estate. It was like a day <laughs> that it was Lehman collapsed. And then it was like countrywide. Then it was like Merrill. Then it was just like thousands upon thousands upon thousands just entering the job market thousands or I'm sorry, thousands millions and then millions of homes entered it you know I know people like to equate it to that but the people have put down 20 percent on most homes or at least 10 percent the equity in the home has gone up the refis are at three percent like there's no reason that it's gonna be anywhere near 2009 I think it's gonna be like a slower kind of you know, slower market, but it's not going to be a boom, as the article talks about, which I agree with. Definitely. I mean, and a lot of people are thinking about that just because, you know, 2008, 2009 is recent history. Yeah. But that was a completely was, different yeah. crisis. It's totally, uh, you know, hard to even co compare, uh, you know. It's like a slow burn. Yeah. As opposed to like a forest fire. <laughs> it was like, okay, I don't know what to do. What would be really interesting, it made me think here, is if the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates, what would happen to the real estate market? Oh, it would go through the roof. Yeah. It would be yeah. crazy. That's where they started doing in 2008, 2009. So, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, before we close, one we got a bonus. extra bonus article just because you guys are in for some I, I remember, treats. I remember when this Knightsbridge Mansion is on sale for 200 million pounds after billionaire owner sells up. Because I remember uh, during COVID when this was purchased. Oh, yeah. And somebody bought this incredible trophy home in London. And it is the creme de la creme. You know, it has like 50 rooms. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It is something like what was it purchased for? Trophy, trophy property. Uh, it was purchased in 2020 for 210 million pounds. Now it's on for 200 million pounds. Why? Because the owner is the uh, CEO of Evergrande, the Chinese real estate company that is, you know, wow potentially going bankrupt that there's a ton of news about liquidating you know, yeah so he is uh getting out of some of his real estate wow. and they said that there's tons of showings for it a lot of interest and i mean that's kind of where back to the opportunity opportunities I yeah and you know this was recently purchased you're getting it for less I'll, I'll, well the pound has also got, gone down in value so here you go i mean talk about an opportunity to get into one of the nicest properties probably in the entire world. Yeah. I mean, public. There's a $250 million apartment for sale on uh, Central Park. Yeah. This makes that look like, you know, the poor house. Yeah. So, yeah. Take yeah. a look at that one if you need representation. I mean, <laughs> to, uh, I'll there. call all of the uh, princes that I know. On that point though, to people, the shifting amount of money that's going to be made in this is crazy. Yeah. Talking about the, like, if you holistically looked at what we just talked about is that six point or whatever billion was raised on top of what was already raised. So that's opportunity. There's a, there's going to be a massive shift, just like in 2008, 2009, 2010, in who owns money, who owns property. This is a case in point. This home was just purchased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, this is like an estate for generations and it's already being dumped. So I, I see a massive shift. Obviously COVID had everything to do with it on who's making money and the one article or the video I sent you was that in 2000, you know, during the last recession, I think it was 40% or 17% became millionaires. During that time, 
17, 70% new millionaires, I should say new millionaires, and 40% of millionaires increase their wealth. Wow. So you could also look at 60% decrease their wealth, or you could look at it, all these new millionaires. So you have to be, you can't just read the headline. You got to piece it all together. That's what we're trying to do here at the counter offer. Right. And uh, I'm glad we got a bonus. So if you guys have any questions, obviously send it over. Any, or an article. Yeah, I was going to say any articles you want us to talk about because there's, there's so much content that is being pushed out that it's kind of like they just are making content to make content. Yeah. You know, in case in point is when you read an actual good article about eight points about why there's not going to be housing, in, it, it's someone who did research. They didn't just graduate from NYU journalism school and is getting paid nothing. This is, you know, and that those are the articles that need to be highlighted, yeah. not the clickbait, blah, blah, blah. You know, one of them was the Gen Zers or whatever. And it's like, of course, a 14 year old isn't buying a home. Like one of them was like, Gen Zers aren't buying homes. Yeah, because they're 14. <laughs> you know, like what? <laughs> but we're uh, we're pushing back on those. Yeah. Sift through to find the good articles. Exactly. Well, all right. Until next week, have an amazing week and. Uh